Hey 1301 folks, uh, what I want to do uh, in this video is walk you through the expectations um, and assignments for week number two. So what I'm going to do is pull up D2L, um, walk you through where to go, what to do, um, and also give you some more information about some of the things I want you to do in the discussion post this week. So first things first, take a look at D2L. There is an update about uh, tutoring that's available, so please make sure that you're keeping that information in mind. What I'm going to do is go to the content area, and I want you to note, let me center this first, I want you to note that there are a couple of new things posted here. So the first is that um, there is the rubric for the paper topic portfolio, so take some time to look through that, um, and there is also an instructional video related to that assignment. The same is going to be true for the multimedia project. There are the guidelines as well as the video. Um, that's those are assignments for down the road, but it's good to start thinking about those now and to kind of see what the requirements are um, so that you can start planning accordingly. Okay. On the left hand side, remember that we have our course schedule, but there is a new area posted here by Ms. Reyes. Uh, Ms. Reyes is a, a tutor, a writing tutor that we're lucky enough to have in our course. So uh, she's posted some great information here about how to get in touch with her, um, as well as some, you know, just general resources. Um, so here are, you know, her hours and her email address. So uh, make sure that you're keeping this in mind as we work through the course, because Ms. Reyes has incredible experience and is wonderful as a tutor. So she is a resource here. Okay. If we look at week number two, there are some different um, uh, things to, to address, right, in the content area. So the first is a video uh, that I just posted about some of the common errors that I generally see in teaching a composition course and some things that I was seeing in our discussion posts. Um, so I walk through some of those and just kind of give some ideas about how to address them. Um, but really what I wanted to point out is that these are habits that we've developed over time. Um, and so it's just something where we want to start working through them, right? And noticing when we do them, um, the more we write and address them, the, the easier it will become. They will become uh, they won't be habits anymore, right, with more practice. Um, and I also talk about some reading strategies, so I recommend that you take a look at that for sure. I've also posted a link for a Choi's article. That's for the writing journal this week. It's based on Choi's um, article, which is entitled What Americans Can Learn from Other Food Cultures. Um, and then Irvin has an article entitled What is Academic Writing? That's for Friday's reading response post, okay? So keep those in mind. I do want to walk through um, our writing journal based on Choi's work, right? So what I want you to do is summarize her work in just about three paragraphs, okay? So um, looking at the way she formats it can be very helpful, so keep format in mind, right? She is intentionally separating into categories and subcategories, and that can always be helpful in um, summarizing, right? If she's broken the ideas down in these ways, then we can also do that when we summarize her work, okay? What I also want you to start thinking about is um, quoting and using research usefully. That's something we want to develop in this course, so we're just going to kind of practice that this week. So. Um, with writing and composition, we follow MLA or Modern Language Association guidelines. And so for cho choice work, I want you to, after you summarize, choose one quote, one quote that is meaningful in whatever way. Okay, so I want you to type the quote after those summary paragraphs. Um, I want you to make sure that you're doing that accurately. And accurately in MLA means utilizing um, uh, quotation marks to show that you are taking somebody else's word, word for somebody else's work, word for word. Um, and I really need to stress that we need to do this accurately. Sometimes I see people using quotes, not in this class, but previously, um, and it's clear to me that the words do not exactly match the original article. So you want to make sure that you're being very careful. Emily is very intentional that way. Okay, so what I want you to do is accurately type that quote, right? And then I want you to incorporate it into a brief paragraph, you know, connecting to your own ideas. Okay, so I've pulled up Choi's article here as an example. Um, forgive me, I'm going to scroll all the way up. So you can see that this is Choi's work, right? And she is a very quotable author in this article, and we're going to come back to this article again and again and even use it as a source down the line. Um, so it really will pay to take your time working through and, and thinking through her writing. 
What I really would like you to notice too is that she is a great example of using other people's work and other people's words to support her own. So she is using research in the same way we want to use research in our own writing. So you'll see that she starts and shares her experience and then she starts noting, so notes Jennifer 8 Lee, uh, don't be thrown, 8 is uh, Jennifer 8 Lee's middle name. Um, so notes Jennifer 8 Lee and then Choi is using quotation marks to indicate that these are the words that belong to somebody else. Okay, and that is the same thing that we're going to do in our own writing. Okay, we want to be very intentional. We want to avoid plagiarism. And a lot of times plagiarism comes into play because people are forgetting just the quotation marks. It's not intentional. It's not something that the author means to do or the student author means to do. Um, but in a hurry, they may forget those quotation marks. So we want to really start practicing using them and using quotes properly. Okay. Um, so she's using the work of other people to help support her own ideas. Here's another example. Uh, she writes, Jennifer Berg, comma, Director of Graduate Food Studies at New York University, notes that food is particularly important when you become part of a diaspora, separated from your mother culture. So if you are thrown by any of the vocabulary words, make sure you're looking them up. That's another reading strategy, right? But I want you to note that, you know, if you wanted to say food is particularly important when you become part of a diaspora, you need to make absolutely sure that you are being ethical in the way that you're utilizing these quotes. This is an idea that comes from Jennifer Berg, not Amy Choi. Right, so she's paraphrasing Jennifer Berg's ideas here. Um, so you don't want to, in your own writing, say, well, Choi states that food is particularly important. You wanna make sure you're reading carefully, you're giving credit to those people whose ideas you are referencing, right? And then we get into an actual quote, word for word, from Berg, okay? So I want you to choose a quote from this text, and the best thing to do is just choose a quote that is from Amy Choi as an author. Don't you know, choose one of these other quotes or something that's attributable to another author. We're going to work on how to do that down the line, but for right now, we're just trying to keep it simple and just kind of dipping our toe into using MLA, right? Um, so what I want you to do is pick a quote by Choi. So I'm going to use this as an example. So she knows that food is identity, right? Um, and so the melting pot in American cuisine is a myth, not terribly unlike the idea of a melting pot of American culture, notes Chef Dan Barber, right? Um, so right here, we can attribute this, um, you know, Barber goes into more detail, right? Not terribly unlike the idea, but this first section is something that Choi is stating, right? So if I'm gonna use this quote, or if I'm gonna use another quote by Choi, right, I want it to be word for word. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy and paste this is where sometimes we get into trouble when we copy and paste right into a Word document without properly attributing uh, the work to an author. So I'm gonna paste it right here, okay? So if left like this, this is a problem, because that was a direct quote that I just copied and pasted. So I wanna make sure that I'm using quotation marks, right? And here the quotation marks actually go after the comma. And I included Choi's name, right? So that keeps it within MLA guidelines. I'm giving her credit, and I'm also word for word including a quote by her. So in MLA, we don't want quotation marks on the outside and then quotation marks on the inside because that can be kind of confusing to readers. So if it's used as a quote in the original text, you just use single quotation marks here. Okay, so this is me using her quote, right? But we want to do a little bit more than just that, right? So in thinking about, you know, um, uh, the work of Choi as something we want to reflect on, you can say, uh, the melting pot in American cuisine is a myth, states Amy Choi. And that is something I can relate to because, right? So I'm incorporating that quote within my own sentence. Okay, and I'm still giving her credit. Another way to do that to follow MLA guidelines is
So I'm putting Choi's name in parentheses after the quote where it appears um, because I don't want somebody to read this and not recognize that these are somebody else's ideas. So the quotation marks indicate that as well as the last name in parentheses, which is how in MLA uh, we give credit. So we can either fully state the person's name here or we can do so in parentheses after that quote if we don't want to stick the person's name into the actual sentence itself. Okay, y'all, if you're a little bit thrown by this, don't don't get overwhelmed or concerned about it too much. I just want us to kind of dip our toe into this, right? Um, and in the uh, discussion post prompt, I've also provided a link to the Purdue Online Writing Lab website that offers more information about MLA quotations and how to use those. So we have three different examples here of how to utilize quotation marks, how to make sure that we're referencing the person uh, whose ideas we are using, etc. Okay, um, so there are some resources there that can be helpful. So that is for the writing journal, which is due on Wednesday. For the reading response this week, you're going to read Irvin's What is Academic Writing? And I want you to identify two of the myths that you relate to the most, which will make more sense when you read his work right? Um, so follow and answer these prompts and a response to the above questions and ideas should probably take about four paragraphs, okay? Um, it will require that you understand the myths and are able to kind of in your own words relate to them. And then I want you to create two questions for your peers to answer. So instead of responding to our writing journal this week, we're responding to one another in the reading response. Um, so you need to create two thoughtful, thought-provoking questions based on the reading. Okay, um, and it needs to be something beyond getting a yes or no response. You really want people to go back to Irvin's text and to engage with this text again based on your questions. So your initial response is going to be due Friday, but then you need to respond to two other people by Sunday. I want you to also note that in D2L, it will appear as though um, you know, this discussion post is open and available until Monday the 15th. That does not mean Monday the 15th is the due date, right? Please follow the due dates on the syllabus or those indicated here. Um, I don't want you to, to be confused by this, okay? It's just the system letting you know when this will no longer be available, which is usually 24 hours after the due date, okay? Don't be thrown. So the paper topic will not be visible and available until Wednesday, uh, but I do want to kind of go through that briefly. And it's because I want us to think about food as our general topic. Food is something that we all can relate to in some way, shape, or form, and that's why it's our overall overarching topic for this semester. So I want you to think about a strong food memory, right? Um, a strong memory that is somehow connected or related to food. Okay, so think of Choi's article and how she thinks of all the ways that food can be meaningful. Food is comfort, food is survival, etc. Um, what category does your memory fall under? Uh, think about following MLA guidelines. So again, pull a quote from Choi's article under one of those different areas um, where food is community, food is survival. When you read her work, that will make more sense. Uh, my example is going to be, if I were thinking of a food memory, one of the strongest ones is when I was going from 12 to 13 years old uh, and my dad made a cake which is very unlike my dad if you knew him you, you wouldn't think of him as somebody who would make a cake or be sentimental in that way but it was really meaningful because it was the first year that he um, was a single parent and so for him to make a cake for my birthday was just very memorable and he made it to look like a bunny rabbit um, I can post a picture um, that shows you what this looks like he, you know the circle face and then the ears coming up and he decorated it it looked pretty awful but it was really meaningful because it was just uh such a hard time in in our lives but it was also uh just something that showed that you know he put in that kind of effort and he knew that i probably needed it at that young age right and at a transitional age right um so that's something that I could write about in terms of a strong food memory, right? Um, so for these paragraphs, strive for at least six to seven sentences because you want to also bring in some information from Choi. And again, there's some information about thesis statements because we want to start playing around with thesis statements being a roadmap. Think of that, you know, a thesis statement gives your reader or gives your readers, your audience, an idea of where you're going with your ideas. So it becomes a roadmap that you know that you will follow and that they will follow as readers. So click on the link here, right? 
Um, please consider uh, composing in Microsoft Word so you can save these posts and then go back to them and revise and edit them for your final, uh, your paper topic portfolio. So start keeping those in a safe place where you can go back to, okay? Um, this is just generally giving you some background about week two, but if you have any questions, post in the Q&A area or shoot me an email. Good luck.